Raider Nation, what is the deal, man? Once again, it's your guy Panama Fargo, and I'm back to y'all live with another episode of the Raider Rundown. And today, man, we're going to be going over the Raiders' new head coach and GM combo, going to be reacting to the pressure that they just gave, right? I'm going to give you my notes, my takes on it, and at the same time, why I think it might actually work. Am I crazy? Let's see. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get this intro started. Let's get the show cracking. I had a dream that someday I would build the finest organization in professional sports. What is the deal, ladies and gentlemen? Once again, it's another episode of the Raider Rundown. Make sure you guys are tapping on the like and on the subscribe button. And please hit on that little notification bell so you get updated whenever I drop episodes like this one right here excuse me but without further ado man look so just came off watching the antonio pierce and the tom telesco presser right the the introductory pressure for them both now really we already know what ap was about ap got me fired up we already know what time it is when he walks into the building okay so he didn't do anything new to shock me or say anything to shock me right because he did what was expected now there was a couple questions we'll get into right but Tom Telesco, all right, talking, just my first impressions, this is me, you can tell the experience. I believe that that's something that's immediate to me when he started to talk. Like, just based off of our previous GMs and all that, like, I, I just, I don't know why, but to me, you can tell he kind of has experience in this game, right? Like, he knows how to navigate the twists and turns of an NFL season. It just seemed like it, okay? So that's off bat. So, okay, does it give you a sense of calm with that? Maybe not. But regardless of it, right, I think still, regardless, I, I think that uh, he he still brought some sense of, okay, you know, he, he probably knows how to navigate relationships in the NFL as well. Not only does he uh, navigate the player relationships, but maybe other GMs in the NFL. He knows how to twist and turn with things like that. It just seems like he brought the his experience with AP's energy, you know what I mean, and, his, and let's just say youthfulness, whatever you want to say, right? And he thought it was the perfect match for both of them to go ahead and both do their jobs equally, right? And at the same time, take pressure off of his shoulders. Because let's talk about Tom Telesco for a moment, right? When you talk about the Charger stint, I've argued all day with Charger fans. So let's do this, right? You talk about the Tom Telesco stint, yes. There were some duds in his drafting, for sure, right? But any Raider fan, you give me a list that's comparable to his drafts. Give me a list that's comparable to his early round drafts. Tell me. Don't have that, right? And even if you want to, I don't want to hear the argument, right, that, oh, he just took the best player available. As a Raider fan, we definitely shouldn't be arguing about that because at the end of the day, right, how many times should the Raiders have taken the best player available and did not do it? So as a Raider fan, this is a breath of fresh air. So I'd rather take a dude that we know is going to take the best player rather than a wild card. Am I right? I'm just saying. All right. So, and now people want to, Argue to me, more Charger fans, oh, he didn't draft any depth. He didn't draft any depth. Am I wrong? For, but isn't a head coach supposed to develop the depth? What head coach have they had to develop any depth whatsoever? None whatsoever. Zero. They've had no coaches to develop any type of depth at all. And if AP continues to trend the way he's trend, look at the way the players are achieving with him at the helm, right? Malcolm Coons. Oh, all of a sudden, everybody's ready to crown Malcolm Coons, right? And that's not, I don't want to say sarcasm like he didn't play well because he definitely played well. But I'm saying, right, we're willing to crown Malcolm Coons, but he didn't start surging upwards until AP got to where he got Jack Jones played well, right? Uh, even if you, even to a degree, if you want to say Tyree Wilson started an uptick of play, 
<laughs> everybody started to play well, right? And if you hold that logic and if that continues to trend upwards, okay. Why are we worried about that? Depth should not be an issue if they're being coached properly. What Chargers team has been coached properly? All right. So th there we go, right? Now, if you want to sit there and talk to me about his free agents, I understand that. That's a logical argument, right? The logical argument would be the free agents that Telesco has had has not worked out. He signed a lot of big name contracts to big money, <coughs> leaving the Chargers and calories and salary cap hell. I agree with that. But a thought dawned and occurred to me, right? He's in L.A. L.A. has a wild, wild tax number, right? It's wild, bro. The state tax over there is, is ludicrous. Anybody that lives in California or already knows about it knows what time it is when you talk about California state tax, okay? So I wouldn't imagine most players want to go to that, right? And in order to get said player, what are you going to have to do? We're just talking business transaction, right? What are you going to have to do to get said player? You're probably going to have to overpay to do. That's just what it is. Like, like simply, if you want a guy and the guy knows that most of his check is going to get taken out by California state tax, oh, yeah, bro, you're going to have to unload some bread off that. Like, like you're going to have to. You know what I mean? In order to get him in where, as this situation, you ain't really got to do all that. You know what I mean? You don't have to do all that. And also, we actually have a smart guy running our books in Tom Delaney. So he's handled contracts very well. Say what you want, right? But as of recently, the Raiders have handled their money situation pretty, pretty well so far, right? So having him, he's not – now you go from that to a smart guy, right? Well, here we go, right? Um. Now, making his moves, you can see some of the moves he made. He was trying to, you know, build the roster and go through that and all, all sorts of things to go to the Super Bowl. And you can tell. And obviously, I think the more you look at it, he's had a problem with selecting injury-prone players. Whatever the case is, bro, I don't know what it is. But if you go back and look at his draft history, and even if you look – at, so, at the free agent history, for sure, you go and look at his free agent history, most of them don't work out because of injury. Like, and that's weird. I don't understand what that is. I don't know if that's scouting on his part, or I don't know if that's just player organizational luck, bro. I have no idea. But if you have a chance, go look at the free agent history, right? And, and then I'm going to be making a more in-depth video about Tom Telesco and, you know, his past and all that. But definitely look at that. It's a little weird. But, um, yeah, I think this guy definitely showed the experience. Now, let's get more in-depth on what we saw in the pressure. Questions were thrown, questions flew, and some of them intrigued me to, a, to the upteenth degree. Now, let's talk about the question I was posed about the offensive coordinator. It was asked to both of them, really. but. It was asked in a broad sense. Let's put it like that. Asked in a broad sense. Okay, so the offensive coordinator position is vacant. Who is there that's going to fill it? All right. Now, immediately, Tom looks at AP and says, fire away. He don't even try to answer first. Now, I don't know what that is, but at the end of the day, I'm trying to read body language. You feel what I'm saying? And he look at, he, he look at AP first and said, fire away. And he look, all right, cool. To me. Looks like, all right, bro, you might have your saying who you want, you know, as the offensive coordinator. Now, when AP got into the traits he's looking for, he said that old Raider football. I said it yesterday in yesterday's live. If we're technically talking about Raiders football, isn't that sort of a speed, get the ball downfield deep sort of offense? If we're technically talking about the Raider way, it is. Now, there's a coach that fits that resume that will be coming for an interview pretty soon in Cliff Kingsbury. And once he comes in there, time will tell to see if he leaves the building and who he's deciding between. Now, there is a little birdie. Look, the streets are saying, the streets are saying that he's decided between us and the Eagles for his NFL jobs, right? Us and the Eagles. 
Now, that's just what I'm hearing. If it ends up not being true, whatever the case, hey, it is what it is. But that, that's what I'm hearing. So, could he come here? I believe so. Now, is he an organizational fit? That's the question, right? Because AP also said he's looking for a guy that fits the Raiders franchise and organization, right? He's not just looking for a guy, okay, you may be able to scheme, but are you going to fit us culturally? So already you see that he's trying to assemble guys where the culture remains intact and nobody's able to deviate. That's what you need too, right? Everybody on one accord, bro. This is the Raider way. This is how we're going to go about it. This is what it look like. This is what it smell like. This is what it, everything should be, right? Boom. So that's exactly what I wanted to hear as well from Antonio Pierce. Everything he said about an uh, offensive coordinator, it leads me to believe it's only a couple guys that, that, that it can be looked at, right? You talk about Cliff Kingsbury, Zach Robinson gets the ball downfield, right? They're trying to get the ball downfield. And immediately he made a little joke, you know, talking about, oh, yeah, definitely mandatory 24 points. That wasn't no joke. That's dead ass. It is like mandatory, bro. Over 20 points at least. Over 20 points. They're trying to get the ball downfield. You can tell by the way that he described his offensive coordinator and Tom Telesco back that up as soon as AP said it. He even said, well, what I, being from the Chargers organization, what I know the Raiders for is speed and getting the ball downfield. It's time to score points, right? Now that leads to the quarterback question, all right? And this is for my guy, Randy, man. Shout out if you are watching the video. But um, all AOC supporters might want to cover their ears. From what I have gathered from this, he is not going to be the number one option going into this offseason. He's not. He's not going to be the number one option. I believe that the Raiders is looking to upgrade at quarterback. Now, regardless of what that is, we'll see what that is. But when asked about the quarterback position, Telesco said he needs to do further research, Right. Didn't immediately come out and say anything. Now, AP said something to say, you know, he did all that. But usually, right, a head coach that is confident in the guy that he has, and if he's a new head coach and he comes into a situation, he's going to be like, well, shit, I got, a, I got a quarterback already. I'm straight. You feel what I'm saying? We got the most important position showed up, bro. We're just going to get uh, all that together. We go. Yeah, no, nah, bro. He, he was like, yeah, no. Nah. You know, he showed traits, but we have to go back and watch the field. When the coach says that, bro, yeah. Yeah, he's looking to upgrade. It's not saying you're terrible. It's not saying you're trash, but he's definitely looking to upgrade. And that's what I think they're going to be they're going to be looking to do. Um, now what does that entail? We'll see. As the draft approaches, we will see what the plan is cuz now this is where the worry comes in for me because the question was asked about the draft and Telesco then said he's not going to make our scouting department conform to him, whereas he's going to conform to the scouting department, which I hope he hope he keeps that word true because you knew my concern all along, right? If you go to a new GM, he's going to need his own dudes in scouting department or, or his own philosophy, his own vision. So guess what? Off of that, he's going to want to change some things. It's so late in the process, Right. Now, he's just got to conform to what's going on. So I hope it's not a rushed thing. I hope they understand what they're looking at. I hope that he has done some uh, – you would think that he's done some scouting on his own, right? But the scouting that he would do for the Chargers is way different than the scouting that he would probably do for this roster, right? It's completely different. And he even said that too, which I respect. So hopefully, you know, there, there's enough time for him to get comfortable – Enough time for him to really talk with the scouting department. Now, what things I have not heard yet is about Champ Kelly. Now, for those who do not know, he is still under contract for one more year. After this next year, he is then free to do whatever he wants, but he is still under contract. The only way he can get out of this contract is if he is hired as a GM elsewhere. Now, he can tell the Raiders he wants to leave, but still haven't heard anything about Champ. Now, if he stays in place, that 
is huge. Huge, huge, huge if he stays in place, bro, because now he can be that bridge between Telesco and the scouting department. So let's hope that's something that can happen. Also, another note from the presser, right? AP shouted out everybody in the crowd. Another an important name he shouted out, Patrick Graham. So Patrick Graham was in the house for the introductory press conference. I don't know about y'all, but that gives me good vibes for that. So, you know, I think Patrick Graham will be staying and we rocking and rolling, baby. We we getting it cracking. So everybody will be returning. GM's different, but GM's got experience, right? So now you look around AP, there's experience. There's take a breath. You feel what I'm saying? There's ups, there's downs, bro. But ain't nothing going to phase it, right? You know what I mean? That's what it seems like right now. Patrick Graham has that sense of calm, experience, continuity. Tom Telesco, to me, he gave the sense of experience. He gave that sense of, I've done this before, and this is a fresh start for me. And these definitely, there are things I need to do different. But at the end of it, he needs to do different. But, you know, I've done this, and I feel like I can, I can run this better. You feel what I'm saying? So he gave the experience to me. Um, and then you look at the OC. Now, the OC, that's where it gets dicey, right? But you do have Tom Coughlin. You do have Marvin Lewis in your corner. Let's hope that the offensive coordinator position is something that they get figured out, right? And like AP says, it has to fit the culture, fit the culture. Um, and I'm excited, actually, for the direction of this team. I'm not going to lie to y'all, right? I'm not going to lie to y'all. I think the direction of this team can actually be a good one. Can actually, If this marriage works and this marriage can work like I think it can, we can be looking at something sustainable. We can. I believe it. I believe it. We can be looking at something sustainable. Um, I don't think Telesco is going to come in here and gut the roster. I do not think that. I don't at all. I, I think he knows this roster's close. I mean, he's played us, right? You got 63 hung on your dome. So, I think uh, he knows the roster's close. So regardless of it, I, I'm I'm confident in it. But y'all let me know down below. Y'all let me know how y'all felt about the pressure today from Tom Telesco, from Antonio Pierce. Did it fire y'all up? Did it give y'all hope? Did it not, right? Um, y'all let me know down below. And, and let's talk about it, man. So remember, make sure you guys hit the like, hit the subscribe button. If you're watching this video right here, then... After this, go ahead and hop over to my dog, Protect the Shield, on his channel because he's got Hugh Jackson live, right, for a live interview. Go ahead hop over there. Hopefully get your questions answered, man. So without further ado, make sure you guys are hitting all them buttons, man, and you know I keep it authentic from the clouds to the ground on the Raider Rundown. I need a bad bitch with an accent, serving in peace, still taxing. Just got tapped for the young cash app, moonwalking like a young Mike Jackson. Yeah, shots to the head, ride clean and still fuck feds, realest nigga and it's on my kids, so who the fuck gonna wanna test me, bitch?